Welcome back to The Real Story. There's a bitter battle brewing in western Connecticut. The race for the 5th District Congressional seat, currently held by Democrat Johanna Hayes, hangs in the balance and is up for grabs. Representative Hayes is committed to joining us on a future program, but today we'll talk to her Republican challenger, former State Senator George Logan. Thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Thanks, man. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, so let's jump right in here. Pollsters, pundits have officially put the 5th District race in the toss-up column. Uh, but the last time that a Republican won the seat was back in 2004. For nearly 16 years, Connecticut's entire congressional delegation has really been controlled by Democrats. So what makes you think that you're the candidate and now is the time? Well, I think the uh, residents, the voters of the 5th Congressional District are tired of the status quo. Uh, they want a, a change. They want to see something different. Uh, and we know we're not going to get that under the uh, current uh, one-party rule uh, here in Connecticut and in Washington. Uh, the Biden, uh, Harris, Pelosi administration, uh, backed by uh, my opponent, um, has done a number, you know, uh, with our nation. You know, we're looking at affordability. Is that a major problem for many families, and individuals in the district? And things like gas prices and baby formula are an issue. So there are many issues that uh, I just believe, and the folks in the district believe, are not being handled by uh, the incumbent. All right, uh, money is not everything, but uh, in political campaigns, yes. it's pretty important. Uh, at last check, Representative Hayes is outpacing you in fundraising by three to one. So I mean, can you stay financially competitive? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, um, we have lots of momentum in the district. Um, folks are very excited about this campaign. We have lots of folks in the district contributing to the campaign. We have raised uh, uh, about a half a million dollars, which is significant. Uh, and we're getting a lot of support uh, throughout Connecticut, but actually nationally as well. There are a number of uh, groups out there that are, are showing an interest in uh, the race, and we're uh, hopeful uh, that we'll uh, receive more support as we head towards this long home stretch. And I am confident that we will have the resources to get our message out. Um, Democrats have criticized you, saying that you don't even live in the 5th District. Um, it's my understanding that you have lived in Ansonia for decades, which is the 3rd District, of course, and um, you're renting a home, which is owned by your uncle in Meriden. Um, so will you commit to making the 5th District your permanent residence? It is my permanent residence now, uh, and it will continue to be. Uh, my uh, uncle, uh, John, he doesn't live in the home. He lives in Florida, so I am renting the, uh, the house. But, and I have uh, multiple properties as well, but we are fully committed uh, to Meriden and to the 5th Congressional District. That is really not an issue at all. I want to explore your stance on some issues. Uh, let's get into those issues. Sure. Um, and I want to look at your voting record as a state senator for a little bit. So first, the issue of guns. Sure. Um, we've seen a rise in mass shootings and, of course, live in the state where Sandy Hook happened. Um, when you were in the state Senate, you voted against banning bump stocks and against a bill that would have prohibited guns from being stored in unlocked vehicles. Um, do you think that we need further regulation Regulation on guns, including an assault weapons ban. So Connecticut has some of the strictest gun laws in all of the nation. Uh, I always consider myself a, a reasonable uh, individual. Uh, so when you look at gun controls, I, which is, I failed to point out, I did vote in favor of the uh, ghost uh, guns bill. Right? I believe that firearms should be, uh, you know, registered and they should have serial numbers to them. Uh, when it comes to bump stocks, I would challenge you to argue. Do you know what a bump stock is? Does anyone know what a bump stock is? At the time when I was voting for it, uh, there was no one manufacturing bump stocks. Uh, you couldn't buy bump stops in Connecticut. Uh, so it really was an issue for Connecticut residents. And for that reason, uh, I don't like voting for uh, bills and issues just based on the title. And I believe that bump stop bill was a bad bill, and it was just there to agitate, um, you know, those folks who, uh, uh, you know, take issue with it. Well, I took a look too. I mean, and to your point, you did vote for Ethan's law as well, which is safe storage requirements and Absolutely. other gun manufacturing restrictions. Um, uh, you didn't answer the question though about an assault weapons ban. Uh, so, in terms of uh, assault weapons uh, ban here in Connecticut, again, we have uh, taken care of that issue. When it comes to the uh, uh, national stage, we've got to look at the bill. We have to see what the details are. The issue I have is uh, you find in the Connecticut legislature and you also find at the national level is that oftentimes a bill will have a, a, a spiffy title, but you've got to look at the details. There was a bill that went through the, uh, the House uh, recently um, and it was supposed to be aimed at things like assault weapons, but the way it was written, it would have banned other firearms, uh, like hand, certain handguns and shotguns. So those are the kinds of things we have to look at. But I am all for making our community safer sure. and we need to make sure that uh, we are smart about the way we manage 
Sanchez yeah, and Moss. No, the devil's in the details. Uh, so to immigration now, I know you are the son of immigrants, yes. um, but in the state Senate, you voted against a bill that would have allowed local law enforcement to ignore requests from ICE to round up to detain and to deport undocumented immigrants. Okay. Um, if you get into Congress, do immigrant families who have been living here for years have to worry about being separated? So I am totally in favor of legal immigration. I am not in favor of illegal immigration. We do have an issue because there's been a number of years under both uh, parties. We have uh, many undocumented persons in this country. I want to go to Washington to fix our immigration problem. I certainly am not interested in rounding up families that are, are currently living in the United States of America, but I want to secure our borders. I want to fix the border crisis that we have now that the Biden-Harris uh, administration, uh, along with uh, uh, Congresswoman Hayes, who has not done anything uh, to help the situation, needs to get fixed. We fix our borders. We make sure that those folks that are in our country uh, now certainly don't have to fear that they're going to be uh, thrown out. However, we cannot be a, a, a haven, a harbinger of undocumented persons coming to the United States of America. We have to have borders. Borders are important. Does a wall fix it? Well, I would say this. Uh, I am for uh, border security. So in some areas, uh, a fence may be appropriate. In other areas, it may be a wall. In other areas, it may be cameras. I want to use uh, technology to help us, to assist us to secure our, border, our borders. The issue is we need secure borders uh, and not um, uh, what we have now. And I know this means a lot to you as the son of an immigrant. So, you know, I've also talked to families here who say the process is broken. I mean, it's taken them more than 10 years just to go through it legally. Right. So what do we need to do to reform the system to make sure that if you want a new life in America, you can have one? Sure. There uh, should be uh, an avenue uh, for folks uh, to gain uh, residency and citizenship here. Right Right now, I would say it's a bit cumbersome. And I would say the uh, the reason for that is, is because of the uh, broken uh, policy that we have in Washington. And right now, under... Uh, um, uh, Democrat rule in Washington. We have not been able to fix it. I want to go down there to bring some sensibility. We need to fix our immigration problem and we need to make sure that our country is safe and secure. Um, what is your assessment of what happened on January 6th and w what how do you define and what do you call those people who, who breached into the United States Capitol? Yeah, well, so uh, January 6th, I call that uh, a riot, um, an absolute riot. Anyone who uh, broke the law uh, should be fully held accountable uh, for that. Um, I am not in favor of the current January 6th uh, commission that's led by uh, Nancy Pelosi. I believe uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi does not have the ability to run a fair uh, uh, nonpartisan uh, hearing. Uh, I would have preferred that the uh, investigation was handled by the Department of Justice. I still believe that once these recommendations are made, and you'll see, lo and behold, they'll come right before election time, it'll go to the Department of Justice and they will take care of, uh, of business. Are they domestic terrorists, though? I mean, I'm not talking about the people who were on the lawn, you know, and there were many people who didn't breach into the Capitol, but the people who breached into the Capitol and caused the violence. Are they domestic terrorists? Well, you know, folks have uh, different definitions of domestic What's terrorists. Yours? Well, in this particular case, I consider them uh, writers, and I consider them uh, uh, anarchists. And I believe the ones who broke the law should be fully uh, prosecuted. That's my take on it. Uh, do you think that the Supreme Court did the right thing by overturning Roe v. Wade? Look, I am uh, uh, running to become a member of Congress. Right? I'm not running to uh, be on the Supreme Court. They made their decision, and my job as a congressman will be uh, to act upon the decisions that come down from the Supreme Court. Connecticut, right, overturning Roe v. Wade, for example, uh, does not affect uh, uh, Connecticut, right? Uh, we have uh, codified a woman's right to choose in state law. But well, that's true. That is yeah. true. But if Congress were to put through a national abortion ban, then that would affect Connecticut, and you're going to sit in Congress. So I think you know people would want to know what what's your stance on on Roe v. Wade. I support a, a woman's uh, right to choose. Uh, I believe it should be um, safe, uh, legal, uh, and rare. I am adamantly opposed to late-term abortions. Okay. And um, you know I believe that the uh, voters of the fifth congressional district deserve to know why uh, Congresswoman Johanna Hayes, based on what she said this for her own words, she's in favor of late-term abortions. So I am in favor of women's right to choose uh, and an, um, uh, a national ban on abortions is not uh, something that I, I would support in Washington. I want to represent the people of the 5th Congressional District and I believe that a woman's right to choose is important. Okay. Um, you've criticized your opponent, Representative Hayes, for being a rubber stamp for the Democratic Party. Um, can you offer me some specific examples of when you've bucked your party in the spirit of bipartisanship? Sure, no, absolutely. Well, one, when you talk about um, uh, uh, someone being a rubber stamp or supporting a party, my proof in the pudding is that every single vote that she's taken 
has been 100% in line with Nancy Pelosi's. When I was in the state legislature, uh, that was uh, not the case. You, know, you mentioned uh, a, a number of uh, gun safety bills. I decided to go the way that I thought uh, was right. There are a, a whole slew of other bills in the legislature that uh, I stood with what I thought was right for the people of the fifth uh, uh, of, of the district I was representing at the time. And I will do the same thing in Washington. Well, as well. such as, I mean, what, what are what are some examples of you disagreeing with your party for bipartisanship? Well, there's there's issues on whether it was uh, uh, gun control, whether it was uh, education. I don't have the bill numbers memorized. I was out of the legislature yeah, for about no, two course, years. Of course, uh, education. <laughs> um, when it has to do with uh, uh, issues, uh, social issues, helping folks in the district, there are bills that were specific uh, to the folks in my uh, district, which I uh, always uh, supported. Uh, and I'll do the same thing in Washington as well. Um, your opponent, Representative Hayes, yeah. is a former teacher. Yeah. She sits on the Education Committee. Uh, these committee assignments are often a way to build up clout. Um, and if you get into Congress, you know, have you have you have you given any thought to, into what committee assignments you would like to get on? Sure. Um, my area of expertise as a, an engineer is a problem solver. Um, I've also been focused on uh, more financial uh, issues as well. Uh, so I would like to be on committees that are focused on education is important to, to me as well. Uh, I have a, a history of, uh, of uh, assisting and volunteering at different organizations. The environment is important to me uh, as well. Uh, and so I will look for it. I also want to make sure that my number one goal is to help to make uh, the 5th Congressional District uh, affordable for residents living in the district. So whether it's uh, finance, the uh, environment, uh, education, and security is also very important for me as well. Have you given any thought, we just have 30 seconds, yeah. but have you given any thought to what you'd like your first piece of legislation to be, something you'd sponsor or introduce on the floor? I've, I've uh, looked at a number of different things, right? Uh, but, you know, it's so dynamic, right? Yeah. The changing national uh, tenor in terms of what is the priority and what's happening uh, now. I will uh, remain focused on those areas that I mentioned to you. Affordability, uh, security, uh, education, and the environment. Those are the areas I'm going to focus on, and I will uh, do my best to be a voice, a loud voice, more so than what we have now uh, with the, uh, our current incumbent. Former State Senator George Logan, a Republican uh, candidate uh, for Congress in the 5th District. I appreciate you coming on. I thought it was a good conversation. Thank you, I Thanks appreciate very it. Much. Thank you for the opportunity. All right, and uh, thank you for joining us on The Real Story. Remember, you can catch our interviews in full on our website fox61.com or download the free fox61 news app we'll see you back here next sunday 10 a.m have a great day